Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. We have started the topic of electrolysis and we are done with few of the concepts. I'm going to give you a quick review. Uh, it was uh, the definition of electrolysis, what is conduction, electric conduction, electrolytic conduction. The basic task in this chapter, which we are going to cover, will be related to electrolytic conduction, what is happening in electrolytic conduction and what is all the procedure which we are going through. Ionic compounds will be used for this and how ionic compounds can conduct electricity and when ionic compounds will not be able to conduct electricity. Afterwards, what are the covalently structures which we have studied earlier and why they cannot conduct electricity. Then on this page, I have taught you what are the conductors and what are the insulators and what is an electrolyte specifically, a specific word which is used for the molten ionic compounds or the solution of the ionic compounds. Then afterwards, we have studied the electrodes. There were two types of the electrodes electrodes regarding their charges and regarding their uh, regarding their material you may say that uh, anode and cathode regarding their charge and inert and active regarding their materials afterwards we have studied the different types of the electrolysis which we are going to study in this uh, chapter number one related to molten ionic compounds molten electrolytes so you may say molten compound electrolysis which we are done with then electric uh, electrolysis related to dilute solution that is also completed afterwards uh, i am going to take you to the electrolysis of dilute solution in detail and a few examples of the molten are done and right now electrolysis of the dilute solution is in progress oh it's not done it's in the progress okay so here i am writing the electrolysis of dilute nacl for example but before that you must know what is the reactivity series of the ions okay so reactivity series of the ions is just telling you that which ion is of higher reactivity, higher is the position in the reactivity series, higher will be the reactivity of that ion and hence it will have the lesser discharge rate. Okay, now what is discharging? Okay, here we left and I'm going to continue from the same point. Okay, so now what is discharging? Discharging is the, I'm going to zoom it a little bit, discharging, it is the ability it is the ability <clears throat> of ions to move from the solution from the solution to the electrode and perform a chemical reaction there there is called discharging now in one of the mcq examiner is asking that which of the ions will move towards the negatively charged electrode and which of the ions will move towards the positively charged electrodes many of the students have performed that question correctly if you are looking into the threshold finally and some of the students couldn't solve it correctly why it is so look at here guys so for example, there is a compound A, B, C, D, okay. I mean to say this is a compound having a water as well. Now there are two types of the positively charged ions and two types of the negatively charged ions, okay. B minus and D minus. Principally, both of these positively charged ions should be attracted towards a negatively charged electrode. They should both should be attracted towards the negatively charged electrode whereas both of the negatively charged ions should be attracted towards the positively charged electrode okay now we are going to look into the reactivity series of the ions for example if we are saying that c is of low reactivity and here b is of low reactivity so both of them are running but out of the a and c c will be the winner okay and c is going to show you the reaction at the electrode whereas out of b and d b will be the winner and b is going to show you the reaction over there okay so we cannot say this thing that both of them are not running no both of them are being attracted by the oppositely charged electrode but out of the two only one will be able to show you the reaction and why it is so because one of them will be of the low reactivity hence its discharging will be higher okay so right now i am on the next page and what is happening here we are dealing with the electrolysis of sodium chloride solution sodium chloride solution electrolysis okay here i can tell you that what is happening 
we have two types of the ions na plus one and cl1 minus as it is a solution i must write here diluted solution okay and the ions of the water that is h plus one and oh1 minus are there as well okay if we are looking into the reactivity series we can see this thing that uh, between sodium and between sodium and hydrogen i am going to write it with a red color so that you people may be able to differentiate between sodium ion and hydrogen ion hydrogen ions are lesser in the reactivity hence they will have their higher discharging rate between chloride ion and hydroxide ion hydroxide ions are of lesser, lesser reactivity hence they will have higher discharging rate so this is happening here i am going to encircle which ions are going to be discharged from here oh1 minus ions will get discharged okay now the same story both Na plus one and H plus one will be attracted towards the negatively charged electrode. Both Cl one minus and OH one minus will be attracted towards the positively charged electrode. But out of these two positively charged, only one will be able to show you the reaction. And out of these two negatively charged, only one will be able to show you the reaction. Okay. Now what will be the reaction? Look at here right now. Okay. So this is the positively charged ion, and where it is going to go? Negatively charged, negatively charged electrode. I'm writing here negatively charged electrode and what is the name of the negatively charged electrode? It is called cathode. Okay. And now I'm a little bit decreasing. Okay. It is called electrode and which is called cathode and at the cathode, what is happening? Oil or rig? Rig is happening. Okay. What is rig? It is reduction is loss. Reduction is gain of electron. Reduction is gain of electron. Okay and what will be the equation for this it will be h plus one plus one electron it is converting itself into h okay as we know this thing that hydrogen is one of the diatomic elements so we are going to write two h plus one plus two electron and converting itself into h2 okay on the other side this is oh1 minus it is a negatively charged ion so it is going to go towards the positively charged electrode positively charged electrode and what is the name of the positively charged electrode it is called anode and what is happening at the anode oil okay what was oil oxidation is oxidation is loss of electron loss of electron okay <clears throat> one more thing which i would like to inform you or give you a reminder <clears throat> that as it is going towards the cathode so hydrogen ions are considered as cations I mean to say the positively charged ions are considered as cations. So as it is moving towards anode, so negatively charged ions are considered as anions. Okay. So here we are writing that loss of electron is going to happen. Guys, now I am going to tell you one of the very, very important equation. Those students who are practicing the past papers right now, they are observing this thing that the examiner is asking for this equation directly. And there can be this equation for like two marks as well. One more thing which I would like to give you a reminder that you people have to write the ionic equation. So you have to write the state symbols as well. So it is a gas and all the ions are always in the aqua state. Okay. Or for example, if it is heated, then it will be considered as in the liquid state as well. Okay. So from this side, it will be 4OH1 minus and it is going to convert itself into 2H2O plus O2 plus 4 electron. Okay. Now there can be a question that why we are taking 4OH1 minus. Guys, to make the equation balance, we have to take 4OH1 minus. Otherwise, it is not possible. One should know this thing that OH1 minus, 1OH1 minus is going to lose one electron. So hence 4OH1 minus one minus are going to lose four electrons so when there will be four electrons lost for example this is equal okay so we can see this thing here very clearly so there are four oxygen so there are two oxygens here and two oxygens here so oxygens are balanced now and there are four hydrogens it means that there are four hydrogens over here so it means that we can say that electrons and hydrogen and oxygen are balanced in this equation as we have lost four electrons so we must be in four electrons as well so what will be the equation in that case that i'm telling you <clears throat> so it will be 2h plus 1 plus 1 and plus 4 plus 2 electrons giving you 2h2 now we are going to take 4h plus 1 plus uh, 
four electrons plus means plus one okay and they are going to give you what two h2 okay so here we can see this thing that number of electrons being lost and gained are equal so we are cancelling the number of electrons being lost and gained and here i'm writing the resultant equation okay what will be the resultant equation in this case it will be 4oh1 minus plus 4h plus 1 plus 1 arrow 2h2 plus 2h2o plus oxygen okay now point number one is this that as we are going to prepare oxygen this side and hydrogen this side so one can say this thing that bubbles of a colorless gas are observed at the anode and the bubbles of a colorless gas are produced are observed at the cathode okay whenever examiner is asking about observation you cannot tell that oxygen is being produced at the anode or hydrogen is being produced at the cathode you must write down the observation what you are observing so when you are saying that i am observing hydrogen gas is being produced at the cathode one should so say this thing as well that bubbles of a colorless gas are produced at the cathode which which pop in the flame okay similarly when we are talking about oxygen we should know this thing that it is a bubbles of a colorless gas which are being produced at the anode and they are relightening the glowing splinter so this is the test for the oxygen and hydrogen which you must say okay one should say this thing as well that as water ions are being discharged so we can say this thing that concentration of sodium chloride is getting higher why it is so because sodium chloride solution was diluted now water ions are being discharged converting itself into hydrogen and oxygen gas so we can say this thing that few few molecules of water are being produced as well this we can see over there as well but even then the solution of water will become a solution of sodium chloride will become discharged due to the will, will be will be concentrated why it is so as water ions are getting discharged okay so this concept must be very clear in your mind now i am going to take you to the next page and uh, there i am going to tell you in about the electrolysis of some other diluted solution but this should be very clear for today's lecture and in the next lecture i'm going to explain about the two more diluted solutions thank you very much guys